All right. What we have on the bench here is the camera that got knocked out, at least wise I think it did. Um, and I replaced it with that um, dome camera that I'm having trouble with. It's a standard analog camera. The BNC goes in here for the video. This is the video out. And in here is the 12 volt power which you would take one of these and you just plug it in here the barrel connector and that's what you have okay it's a Dawson and um, I got this on eBay this is probably a good five years old That's the one that was working on that cable and no problems at all until apparent lightning strike, I think, is what did it because the next morning when I turned the monitor on for the surveillance cameras, this camera was out. Now, the wires that come with the cameras that you get from eBay. This one came from eBay also. Um, are a hundred feet long and they have the yellow and usually a red. The red is for the 12 volts. The yellow is for the composite video. They have the male and female at each end and are a hundred feet long and they're very thin wire. You can't buy them, as far as I know, less than that. So, the house is 67 feet long. So, the longest run we would have would be 67, then up the side of the house and into the camera at the soffit. So you use up almost all the 100 feet, but it's very thin wire. So I'm sure there's a voltage drop on the 12 volts. However, this morning I turned the camera on, you know, it's perfect. It only acts up at night. Now, it is defective obviously, but co-channel interference um, rather than to type out a lot of things, it's hard, as I said, for me to type. I'm going to answer the question here. He's the master. I want to thank you for the information. Um, I checked all that stuff. First of all, there are eight jacks on the back of the Night Owl DVR. It is not a VCR, like you say. It's not a video cassette recorder. It is a DVR. It has a hard drive in it. It's made by Night Owl. I don't know, five, six years ago I bought it. I don't remember. But anyways, this is the camera. It has eight B and C jacks on the back. The driveway cam and the port, front porch cam are not affected. As I mentioned in the video, but I gotta clarify myself, I swapped B and C's between the front camera's driveway cam and the corner cam, the dome cam, which is giving me trouble, and the co-channel interference. Does not matter. I still get co-channel interference on the second back camera. Just on that one camera. So no matter what combination I use on the back jacks of the Night Owl, it don't matter. Yes, I'm using four jacks. It don't matter if I use five, six, seven, and eight. It's all the same. No changes. I've done all that. Okay. 
Now, because the wire is very thin, maybe the ground is not good. It's a huge, huge job for me to crawl underneath the house to run the wires. It's getting more difficult for me to do these things. Um, and normally I have the wires running up under the house from the bedroom where my computer is, the DVR, to the floor. I have an, uh, a tube going down to the floor where the wires are all going down. And they travel along the frame of the house, your mobile home. They're tied up with uh, cable ties, zip ties. And they go all the way up and they're not on the ground. Uh, they're pretty well suspended off the ground. And then they go up the side of the house in the trim and all the way up into the soffit. I at first thought that maybe there's mice that had hit the cable. But you see how clear the video is in the daytime. So there's nothing wrong with the cable because I'm getting good composite video through it. Remember, this is not a Wi-Fi camera. I do not own a Wi-Fi camera. These are composite video only. Okay, so they need a cable to run to your DVR, not a VCR, DVR. Okay, so I have this power supply here, and this is a good old linear power supply, not a switching. I had it. This is what I was using last night. However, The way that camera was jumping around and flashing on and off and squiggly and everything else. I was running it on this power supply. I took it off the switching power supply, which, as I said before in the other video, handles eight cameras. I'm only running four on it. It's made for security cameras, okay? It can handle six amps. <clears throat> so it claims. Or eight amps, I'm not sure, but it's a switching power supply. And the power supply don't even weigh as much as this. This is a heavy transformer in here. Okay. This is a good old linear supply. However, I have my scope here, which you can't see right now. I think I got a lot of ripple in this. Because after I made the video last night, I put it up and then I went to bed. And just before I approved some comments and then I went to bed. And because uh, I go to bed at 1030 at night. I do not stay up late. So um, I checked the comments this morning. And I haven't answered very many of them yet, but I will. Um, the video looked horrible on this. Jumping up and down as you saw on that video, a picture is worth a thousand words, okay? So, I took and put, plugged back in my switching power supply that I was using on it. And the camera no longer switched around and flopped around like that. It was all washed out. It was bright, blurry, and I can see the deck railing and everything, but it looked horrible. The quality was terrible, so it's a piss-poor camera for night vision. It's good and clear for what it is in the daytime. It's perfect today. It's only at night. And by the way, it's raining out in case you hear something. We need the rain. And it's only going to be in the upper 60s today. I love it. I'm enjoying it while, I, while we can. So... These things are virtually impossible to break. I don't care what anybody says. I usually have to take a hammer and bang the hell out of them, bust them all up. It's got a lot, it's obviously got a lot of ripple in it. Now, unloaded, this is 17 volts, okay? In spite of the fact that it says 12. And it is, um, get my magnifier out. It's one amp. 12 volt DC, one amp. These cameras, I don't think, take that much. Now, 
what I did is in the shop here I plugged in the power supply in here held my hand over this and I can see all the well not all the LEDs are lit some of them are burned out but I can see the LEDs in here you can see them with the naked eye they're like a reddish so the LEDs are working on this whether the camera is or not I don't know it was not working on the cable that's running to the soffit but yet the new camera is in the daytime it works perfectly so maybe the video part of this crapped out I don't know um, I got to have to get my monitor down and I'm really cramped on this in this shop. So <clears throat> what I want to do is I've got my scope over here. And I want to check the ripple on this. And I can pretty sure that it's going to be high. Obviously, these are simple power supplies. A rectifier, hopefully full wave, with probably a 3300 microfarad cap or something like that, or uh, across the output, and that's all it is. There's no voltage regulation or anything else. So during the day, this looked good. But obviously, trying to light up all the LEDs on the dome camera that has replaced this one, the current draw is probably too much for this because it needs a new filter cap. So I'm going to try to open this up, but before I do, I want to check the ripple. That's going to be very hard for me to do that. Because you can't get anything to clip on there. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try to stick a, a resistor. The lead isn't fat enough. And you fold it over, it won't go in at all. Try to get... Put a load resistor in here. And what I have to do, by trial and error, because I'm no good at math, is try to draw one amp... I'll use my cheat sheet, look it up on the on the cheat sheet wheel. I want to draw one amp off of this and measure the ripple across the resistor, which is going to be the load, which will simulate the camera. I don't know what the camera draws because it's going to be impossible for me when this is plugged in here into the camera going to be impossible for me to measure the current of the camera unless I cut the wire, the power wire, which is going to be very flimsy, thin wire inside here, and put a milliamp meter in series with it. So the best way for me to do this is to put a resistor across this power pack, get myself in camera here. And draw one amp off of this. This is made for one amp, so I don't want to draw any more than that. I'm 100% sure that that camera doesn't draw no one amp here. Because these cameras, when you buy them at eBay, uh, they don't usually come with a wall wart. But the ones at Harbor Freight that I used to get, I got one that looks like this from Harbor Freight. I can't find it. And... Um, it's good in low light. It's better than any of them, but it's all purple. In the daytime, it's unusable. All the greenery shows it's purple. The colors are so off on it because it's got a IR filter or something in there. I don't know. That's probably didn't disengage or whatever, but that's the way it was when I got it. It came with a tiny little power pack like this. 12 volt, similar to this, only it's right angle. But you know what I mean. 
it has a little tiny wall wart which will run a camera this size so it's rated at a half amp so this is probably my guess is this is drawing about a half amp so I'm gonna pull one amp off of this and read the ripple voltage we're gonna do that off we're gonna set it up and then we'll get you back in I gotta get my cheat sheet out and try to find size resistor I'm gonna need to draw one amp off of this. Oh boy, I usually rely on this thing. But I'm having trouble. I want to draw one amp here. And I got it as close as I can tell with my bad eyes. It looks like it's on one amp when my thumb is pointing. Okay, so we'll hold this so it doesn't move. I want to find out at 12 volts, although it's putting out 17 volts, so that's throwing me off. What the hell size resistor would I use on it? Oh, this damn Ohm's Law is driving me nuts. Even though I got this thing here, I'm stumbling around on this, so I'll end up just experimenting, that's all. And it's going to be hard because then I got to put a milliamp meter in series with it. And I do have a milliamp meter, but it's going to be, um, I'm going to be here all day with this. So, on this scale here, I'm holding this steady now, so turn this around. And I'm at a disadvantage. I got my reading glasses, but I can't read that. I want to. Is 12 volts. Oh, I think I'm reading it right. I can't see that. I have to pause this. I'm sorry. Close as I can read that, with my bad eyes, I'm about on 12 volts. Well, I'm glad I got this thing because I can't, I can't read a slide rule. Jim Asbell has went over and over with me on the phone about it. I, I forget as soon as he tells me. This is why I failed math, and I'll tell you that. I just can't deal with this. That's the hardest part of electronics is math. All right, so what do I need for resistor? 12 ohms? I don't have a 12 ohm. I have a 10 ohm. But it's probably a low wattage. It's going to burn up. So if we're putting, uh, if we're drawing one ampere through 12 ohms, I'm guessing. Guess, guess, guess. I don't know how many watts that is. Let me. Uh, No. I don't know. It's been a while since I used this chart. Uh, let me get let me get my face in a magnifier here. I can't read that. You can probably cuz this camera does real good close-ups. So let me uh get off camera a minute here. Yeah, so about as close as I can see that 12 ohms. Cuz a little beyond 10, you go, you see 20 to the left of that. So 12 ohm resistor, closest I can come to it is a 10 ohm resistor. So that might maybe draw a little more current off of it. Because what you need to do is put the oscilloscope across that resistor, which is a load resistor simulating the most that camera would ever draw off of that power supply and look at your AC ripple and you can do that by way of an oscilloscope. I'd have no problem with that. I just need to figure out what I got to put across that supply. So I'm saying I'm going to say 12 ohms but I know I don't have it so I might have a 10 ohm. I'm lucky if I have that. I know I've got an 8 ohm but that's too much. I'll be back. All right, in my junk box, I found a 10-ohm resistor. Reading from end to end, it's 10 ohms. 
This is an, one of these adjustable power resistors. So we put the lead in there and we read it through here. And you can hear this thing squealing. It's just beyond my ear, ear range. 10 ohms. Hope you can see that. So, spent some time looking. So we're going to put this across it. Move that out of the way here. Oh, that's squealing! It's just in above of my, uh, at the upper limits of my hearing. We're reading a 10.9 ohms now, but we've got a combination of Rube Goldberg here. All right. So actually, the meter, being that it's automatic, this is the meter that I received from one of my viewers. It's automatic, so it's reading resistance now of this resistor here. Okay. So what we've got here, kind of a Rube Goldberg, if you ask me, we got a resistor we're using as a probe to stick in the barrel connector, because you can't use the meter probe to stick in there, because it won't fit. So we got to jockey this around, because this is loose as a goose, you know what I mean? So um, right now we're putting a, about a 10, um, 10 ohm load on it, and according to this, it's reading 10.8. If we pull it out of here, reading the same. In, you can't see the meter. So, in order to get a voltage reading now from this, if you can follow my mess here, the resistors used only as the lead to go in here when I'm pointing with my finger. Okay? Supposedly a 10 ohm looks like a 7 or a 10 watt resistor here, wire wound, and we've got the meter probes here. So we're getting a lot of resistance with these wires here, okay? So that's probably why we're reading over 10 ohms on the meter right now. But we're going to concentrate on the meter. Uh, I took the uh, plastic off. So let's plug in the power supply. So we're down to 11.75 volts with the resistor across it. And that resistor is getting hot. All right, so I, um, we're figuring 10 ohms across, well, it's 17 volts coming out of it. So that's what the complication is. These linear power supplies don't put out a regulated power, you know, like 12 volts, 12.8, whatever. So that's getting really hot. So we're drawing, I don't know what we're drawing off of it, but it's over one ampere. You do the math. I can't. All right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to pause this video a minute. All right, right now we are not connected to the scope yet. The resistor was getting so hot that I took the load off of it right now. I disconnected the power pack from the load and the voltmeter. Right now the meter is reading resistance and the meter is now reading 14.9 ohms. So the resistor, the wire wound resistor, is very hot.
and it is reading 14.1 ohms. It's dropping because um, it's cooling down. So it's not going to give me an accurate reading on this scope. I briefly touched the scope on it and I was getting a um, little ripple. But I need to find out and I got to get my face right on top of the dials of the scope. And I need to find out where the volts and division switch is set at. So I have to do that. By the way, we're not using a scope probe, but we're using a direct connection with clip leads, an RG174 coax, uh, which is a scope. Uh, test lead set that came with my NLS mini scope, which I still got but needs a battery. So let's go check the volts per division on the scope here. Okay, we're, my scope is set for 5 volts per division, as you can see on the lighted display. We do not have a Tektronix type of probe, which would automatically change that. So we're using an ordinary BNC type of cabling. So what you see on the dial is what you're going to get. Um, if we were using a um, Tektronix probe, what you'd get if you plugged in a Tektronix probe is your volts per division would change. What I'm doing is simply shorting out the connector ring, which is a special ring that they put on the scope for using, you know, when you have a Tektronix probe. If you don't have a Tektronix probe and you take this off, you're reading here and then you've got to remember to compensate in the event you know in other words you have to set your probe to 10x if that's what you want right now we're reading direct so we're going to be reading 5 volts per division which means We're not quite in camera here, are we? Let me get you back in there. There we are. And is your baseline, we're not perfectly focused here. There we are now. On the camera, it looks like it's wide, and but it isn't. The camera's showing a big fuzzy line. All right, so this is the baseline. Your baseline could be anywhere you want to establish it. You can start it here. It don't matter. So 5 volts per division. This is one division from here to here. Okay, that's one division. Okay, so it takes 5 volts, and we're on the AC... on the input. Okay, so we're going to be reading the volts per division of the AC component of the power wart, wall wart. So let's back you up. Let's get you lined up and be right back. We don't seem to have a good steady lock in. So it's really jumping around. All right, there we go. All right, what we've got here, and uh, the camera is showing blurriness, but I'm looking at it on the screen of the scope, and I'm reading probably three and a half to four volts per division on the ripple. All right. I don't know, I seem to be having trouble with my input here. You know, 
I seem to have a lot of trouble with my scopes today. All right, right now, we're reading, uh, one volt per division. So we're reading, the, the, the jumping is because I got a piss poor connection because of that resistor using it as a probe. Your baseline's here, one volt per division, that's one volt, two volts. Okay, unloaded, 16.85 volts, unloaded. Like I say, this is a linear, typical, unregulated power supply. I'm having a very, very bad time making connection with this in here. It just will not make a connection, so I can't get my scope to read. See, I don't have a plug that'll go in here. I can't use my meter probe. The meter probe does fit in there. Okay, good. Good. Now maybe we can connect our scope. I can get this. See what I got to work with here with the Rube Goldberg setup that I got here? Okay, now... And... Let's check the scope. Okay, the scope is now set for one-tenth of a volt per division. Okay, so let's see. Now, remember, we are unloaded off the wall wart. There's no load on the wall wart at all. The only thing that's on the wall wart is the scope and the voltmeter. 16.78 volts is what the output of the wall wart is putting out. Remember, it's supposed to be 12 volts, but they always read high. So it's really hard to adjust the load on something that's not putting out what you want it to put out. But in order to get 12 volts or 12.8, you need a regulated power supply. So anyways, let's go to the scope. My battery's showing yellow on the JVC camera here. Uh, okay, one-tenth of a volt. So we're not even getting... Um, any ripple at all at one-tenth of a volt. We're changing it down to, I got to get my face in here, 20 M, so I guess that's 20 millivolts as far as I know. So, really, we're not getting any ripple off of the power supply except under load. So, I think that's why it was causing that problem last night. As I said, when I went to put the um, original power supply that it's been running on, which you did not see because I tried that after, and I should have waited. The camera didn't jump all around. It just was lousy looking. But still had the co-channel interference. So I don't know. It could be my cabling. That would be a humongous job. And I'll just, I'll just do without it at night. That's all. Because I'm not crawling under the house to run another wire. All those wires, all those cameras are all thin, thin wire. They're in one cable about the size of this here, RG174. That's what they are. They may be a hair thicker. And they contain the audio and video. Whether it shares the same ground, I don't know. I put the load back on it. Uh, 
I don't know what's the matter with my range switch here. All right, there's the, yeah. One-tenth of a volt's going off of scale. All right, so we've got a, I gotta stop this. All right, so, I have no idea what kind of load we're putting on this thing, but like I say, we had a 10 ohm resistor, which is still very hot. Can't pick it up. Which goes up in resistance. It's a wire wound. It still goes up in resistance as it's heated up, which I think is common for wire wound resistors. But to open these things up, I have very bad luck trying to open them up. I end up breaking them. Um, it's a nice war wart. If I can get to replace the filters in here, what I was drawing off of this today is nowhere near as much as I'm going to be, you know, I mean, it's more than what I'm going to be drawing off of the, um, Cam camera's not going to do it that much. So let me get this camera in another place if I don't run out of battery here. Now everybody on YouTube that I've seen make it look easy that you can open these things. It's not easy. They probably crack them open first and then they make the video and, uh, you know, I never can open these. We got a, a big pin driver here and my hammer will gently tap it. I don't like banging on the bench, but it's raining out. I can't do it outside. But we're only going to do a little bit here. We may go down on the floor and do this. That ain't moving. No. You're not going to get that separated. The only way you're going to do that, and it's going to take me all day, and I'm not going to do that, uh, is to hacksaw it. You have to hacksaw it all the way around. It's the only way you're going to separate these. Now, once in a while, you'll get one that will pop right open. This is not one of them. There's no space in there to get a screwdriver or anything else in it. So I'm going to take it on the floor off camera. The battery's almost gone here. I'm tripping over everything in this cramped shop here. And we'll come back on the video in a minute here before we close out the video or the camera will die and lack of battery or whatever. Be back. That cannot be opened. Not without hacksawing it. I bang the hell out of it and nothing. Not a mark on it. There's no way you're going to open that without hacksawing it. So that's the way it is. All the years that I've worked on these things Nine out of ten of them get broken so bad I have to tape them up with electrical tape and they look like hell. So, the switching power supply that goes with the cameras is not that great. I wanted to put an analog supply in there, uh, linear, and I could have got a brand new uh, five amp, four amp. One of them CB power supplies, 13.8 volt regulated at the Jewett City flea market. I had it in my hand, brand new in a box for five bucks. This was about, uh, oh, about the, the same day Tommy bought his Samsung. It was right there. But no, I didn't buy it because I didn't have any need for it. I kicked myself for getting that because what you need to run the cameras is something like this and I don't want to bring this into the house. This is a CB power supply that I bought at a yard sale several years back. Works very well and it is a 3 amp I think regulated. But it's a little big, but the one I looked at at Jewett City was about half the size. It's typical CB type 13.8 volt regulating. Now, if I got that, I wouldn't have to worry about switching power supplies. I could run all four cameras off of it. 
and I would be, it would be very reliable. The only problem, as I said, is the cabling is 100 feet long and it runs under the house. And the thickness of the cable is thinner than this right here. About the thick of, thickness of this meter lead here, and that's both the video and the audio is combined into one like it is here. Only this is a little bit heavier. And it's a hundred feet of that, because that's what it comes to. Oh, you only got a voltage drop there. You know, and the only thing you can do, you know, the only other thing you can do is to feed it with 15 volts, and maybe by the time it gets down to the camera, it'll be 12. You got a voltage drop, but that's just the way they make these things. And I'm not about to run 18-gauge uh, wire to run the power supply and then RG75 coax, 75-ohm coax to run to the video. Uh, that's expensive. I'm not going to do that, and I can't tuck the wire in. It's too fat. All right, so that's going to conclude this video. My battery is getting low. I wanted to, uh, I was going to hope to put a filter condenser in here, you know, replace the capacitor, but I'm not going to rip that apart. It can't be taken apart without sawing it. Yes, if you saw it, spend a couple hours sawing it all the way around, and then you have to tape it back up. It's not worth the effort. I got... I could probably bring this into the house. It's too big. I don't have room for this stuff. But then I can be sure that I got a good solid 13.8, uh, well, actually 12.8 volts. You can adjust this. I think you can adjust the voltage on this. I'm not sure, but if... You come out with 13.8 volts, the cameras probably will behave better. Remember, that camera worked good on that same line. And right now, being it's daytime, even though it's raining, that camera is nice and clear and no co-channel interference. It's only at night. Why? I don't know. Why is it only at night? It don't do it in the daytime. If there was a cabling problem, it would do it in the daytime. Thanks for watching. This is a long video. Take care, everybody.